behind me is the Gateway of India, erected to commemorate the landing of King George and Queen Mary many years ago. This structure was the building that greeted people who arrived by boat, the first thing that they saw of the city of Bombay, today known as Mumbai. It's also the first place on our visit on today's program to this huge, wonderful city. Hello and welcome to Mission 360, I'm Gary Krauss. Today's program is coming to you from the city of Mumbai, formerly known as Bombay. And it's Republic Day here and hundreds of people are out in this park enjoying the day, playing India's most popular sport, cricket. In fact, I'm taking my life in my hands here as cricket balls come through from all angles. This is India's most populous city, some 21 million people. In fact, it's one of the world's largest cities and every day thousands of families move into this city because they have hopes of more opportunities in the city. When you look at the, the crowds, when you look at the people, you ask the question, how can the Seventh-day Adventist Church even begin to have an impact in a place like this? We'll be, we'll be looking at that question and, and others on today's program. And first up, let's travel to Mongolia. If you journey through Northern Asia, you're likely to experience great diversity. From small mountain villages to some of the largest cities in the world, the Northern Asia Pacific region has it all. In terms of population, this region is the largest in the world. And we have about 1.6 billion people living in our territories. So when you hear about China and Mongolia, North Korea, and also Japan, you see, and then you can imagine that uh, we have a huge uh, mission challenges in everywhere in our division territories. With such diversity and size, the challenges are clearly visible and can sometimes seem overwhelming. Despite the difficulty, God has willing servants throughout the territory. Many people in our division territories, they have a passion for mission. When we encourage them, when we work together with them with uh, much prayer, I'm sure that the Lord will continue to bless our missionary activities in our division territories. God has opened impossible doors in the past. Not long ago, the country of Mongolia seemed as though the gospel could never cross into its borders. Mongolia is a country where about half of its population lives in the capital city of Ulan Bator. The challenge of spreading the gospel here is evident. Ekbayar was one of the first Mongolians to be baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church back in the 1990s. This is a country as considered as a closed country because we were former, one of the former communist countries. So we all grew up no religion at all. And after 1990s, when communism collapsed, things got changed. Suddenly people found some kind of empty space in their hearts. When Ekbayar was a student, she met a foreign woman at a school and became friends with her. Her new friend and her husband were sent by Adventist Frontier Missions to Mongolia. One Saturday, Ekbayar went over to her new friend's house and noticed they had just finished studying from a book she didn't recognize. She was curious, so she started asking questions. I want to learn that. And that just sparked a little flame inside that, what is that I want to learn? She was encouraged to join them the next week and she became eager to learn about the Bible. She went back the next week, and after a while, they became close friends as they studied the Bible together. Every Sabbath, I think since then I never miss a Sabbath meeting. Because of friendship, I get close to God. And I always say, 
I didn't find God because I was blind and never interested. Only God found me and he made the way to find me. When Jesus was on this earth, he cared for people. He was their friend and he helped them with their problems. As we continue to represent God, shouldn't we follow Christ's example? Ekbayar's heart was touched because those missionaries first shared Christ's love. There are so many things attracted to me because of their kindness and sincerity to Mongolian people. Even they served to poorest people that we never think of to helping them. But they're so kind and nice people. And finally I found it's because of God in their heart. They, became, they are so kind and they became very close to my heart. And through their friendship, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And because of their kindness, I learned how to be kind to others. Because of their true friendship, I became close to Jesus as my friend. Since then, other Mongolians have come to know the love of Jesus. Thanks to Adventist churches and schools, people in Mongolia can learn about Jesus. Despite the challenges in countries like Mongolia, God is now using faithful servants like Ekbayar to spread his message. Please continue to pray for territories like those in the northern Asia-Pacific region. Pray that the work can move quickly through these difficult areas. But these countries are beautiful too. You know? and God has blessed these countries in many ways. And we hope that uh, we can spread the gospel message to the people in our territories so many people can be saved into the kingdom of God. My guest is Dr. Solomon, who is a behavioral science researcher and teacher here in the city of Mumbai. Dr. Solomon, thanks for joining us. Okay. Now, you are a Seventh-day Adventist church member who's been living here for how long? Yeah, about 28 years. 28 years, so you know this city well, and, and you are one among 21 million people, and I think I've seen almost all of them today because it's such a busy place. What, tell us about this city. What, what's, what's distinctive about it? What makes it a, a, a tick? Yes. Uh, in India, Mumbai is considered to be the city that is a magnet for m migrants. Uh, this is so because this is a place which is considered to be a dream city for the people of India because people believe that they can come over to India and they can get jobs and make life. Uh, there have been lots of stories of people who came with almost nothing and they became millionaires. So people around India, they think that Mumbai is a wonderful city that they also can come about and become big persons. Okay? And I think that's what attracts people. And one more real truth is that nobody who comes to Mumbai goes empty handed. They all get jobs and they get settled down over here. And they may find difficulty in finding I mean, accommodation and other things, but jobs they will always get. And that's why people come over here. Right. So obviously in this city, there's some fabulous wealth but I've also seen people who are struggling to survive. But it all comes together in a mass of people who, and you look at, you look at this and you say, okay, well, we're an Adventist church here of maybe 10,000 members. What sort of impact can we make on the city? What, what do we have to offer? Well, I believe that Adventist church is a very unique church, having a very unique message than most other people. And if only we can make use of that unique message, whether it is a health message or message for the youth, uh, these messages can have a strong impact on people. And I, I feel that in a city like this, there are lots of people who are experiencing loneliness. You know, as I said, lots of people are coming over to the city and they come and try to make a life. But when they come to the city, they find very lonely and they also find that the life is quite tough and they are looking for some sense and meaning in their life and they want to really see to that that uh, their life is you know pleasant and uh, and that they are able to adjust very well and they are the people i suppose that we can reach them and present them about uh, the message of love and peace that jesus offers to us yeah now dr solomon you've been involved for some time in a in-depth longitudinal study of young people working with researchers in America, Australia, and here, 
What are you finding out about the youth here in India? Uh, well, I have begun this study way back in 2010. The study name is called as uh, International Youth Development Study. This study has been conducted in three nations, three continents, and in three cities. Um, Melbourne City in Australia, and Seattle City in USA, and Mumbai City in, uh, in India. In these three cities, what we are doing is that we have been after the young people, especially from the schools, and uh, we reach them and uh, we, we administer a psychological test, a survey questionnaire that we administer, and we have been following this youth for year after year, as it is a longitudinal study. The purpose of this study is to find out how young people's lives are being influenced because of the globalized, globalization factors. You know, the life has been moving very fast these days and information technology has impacting them. And it's not only impacting the young people, but also impacting what young people are connected with, that is their families and their schools, their peers, uh, even their church also, I mean, as a religious organization that they are connected. So we are trying to find out how these connections are influencing the young people and how these connections are uh, uh, making the young people to adapt themselves effectively and thus determining their behavior, whether their behavior is going to be a risk behavior or problem behavior or a behavior which is uh, uh, supported with lots of protective factors. So, uh, so the areas that you're talking about, surely we as Seventh-day Adventists would have something to, to say, to contribute, to help in that. Uh, yes, I do agree with you and I believe strongly that this research helps us to understand at least uh, what are the needs that young people are facing in, this, uh, in, in these large cities in general. And it also helps us to understand that uh, um, which contexts are uh, very strongly influencing people like for example whether it is the context of peer groups or it's the context of families. So when we know that, uh, for example, if we come to know that families are weak, uh, families have got risk factors such as you know in, in some families there is a problem of addiction and things like that when we come to know that I mean as a church I suppose we can also work with the families and help them to turn out turn these families as a as a source of strong protective factors you know we can help families to be I mean, built up help the people to get get themselves out of these uh, risk behaviors where through which they are setting a wrong examples or wrong models to these um, young people. So in that way, I think that this research can help the church to know about what are the needs and what are the problems that we see in the society. Dr. Solomon, you've been involved in health ministry here in Mumbai. Briefly tell me what, what, that's, what that's been in, in, incorporating. Well, we do need, we do notice that in the city like this, as large number of people come, they have problems of accommodation and they, they do face several different, different problems. And uh, uh, being a crowded city, there are limits for effective sanitary um, systems and all that. For all these reasons, we do have a problem, health, serious health problems. You know, people often fall sick to, um, say suppose uh, malaria and dengue and during the monsoon period that uh, yeah, people also fall sick to gastroenteritis and uh, people fall sick to these illnesses partially because they are unaware about how to take care of their health. Now Seventh-day Adventist Church is having a unique health message, a message that helps people to prevent themselves from falling sick. So what we do is that we organize uh, health camps and we also organize health expos through which we are bringing about a greater awareness among the people about the need to take care of their health. So you have various specialty, uh, specialties that you um, share. You have physiotherapists, you have massage, you have doctors. Yeah. That's yes. what... yeah. uh, in our church, we do have people from several health science backgrounds. And as you said that we have, I'm a psychologist myself, and then we have um, uh, uh, physiotherapists and we have uh, one doctor and several nurses we've got and usually when we organize a um, health fair uh, all these people work with us and and also there are people who have studied health sciences broadly they also come and uh, help us in organizing this and there are people who are experts in massage okay and these people provide their skills and abilities and as a result of which we are able to help people through this uh, phase to help themselves to take care of their personal health and thus they will be able to prevent themselves from 
falling sickness. Fantastic. Dr. Solomon, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and we'll be right back right after a short break. Welcome back to the program, coming to you today from Mumbai, India. Next up, we're going to travel not too far from here to one of the most populated regions of the world, Bangladesh. And Pastor Doug Venn is talking to Dr. Lee. Thanks, Gary. I'm right now here in Bangladesh with my good friend, Dr. Myuju Lee. And Dr. Lee, good to have you on the show today. Yeah, good to be with you. Where are we here in Bangladesh? Now we are in Kualbatan, Kaliakur, Gajipur, where our Bangladesh Adventist Seminary and College is located. Okay. Well, that's quite a mouthful to say that, you know, <laughs> the, the village name and the province name. Yes. Uh, here in Bangladesh, how many people are there? Oh, 160 million people live in a small country. Wow, wow, that's great. Uh, now, I know that uh, God has called you and your family to serve as missionaries, but yes. what's that story? Uh, uh, to make the sh short uh, story short, actually, I was converted from Methodist when I was 17 years old. At the time, I decided to be worldwide missionary. God fulfilled my dream. First, I went to Argentina as a missionary for six years. I served church membership there. Then uh, I was dreaming to go to Africa, but God called me to be in Bangladesh. But I am very happy to serve the people who are here. Very good. Yeah. How long has you and your family have you served here in Bangladesh? Uh, I came here 2005. Uh, al almost uh, uh, nine years, more than nine years wow. already, yes. That's great. Yeah. And in those nine years, what have been some of the lessons that you have learned? Uh, here, uh, I have learned how to love the people because mm. these people, even though they are very poor, they are very lovable people. God has given me chance to love and serve the people. I like and I love to uh, serve the people who are in Bangladesh. That's great, uh, yeah. Dr. Lee, yeah. that uh, you're following Christ's method alone <laughs> to then care for the people yeah. and have that, uh, that impact with the love of yeah, God to yes, serve. Yes. What are, can you tell one story of how you've seen uh, God work in maybe a life of a student or you know, someone? Uh, for example, uh, when I was working, uh, serving, in Bangladesh uh, seminary and college, our school, I saw many students, they came from different background, even from uh, different religions. But really God is so great. He changed their lives in the college. Now they are serving as leaders and servant in our denomination. Wow, that's uh, great. That's yeah. great to see how you've yeah. been able to see uh, through education how yeah. lives have been improved yeah, yes. as well as then how the country has been yeah. able to be yeah. improved yes. through their service. Yes. So what are some of the, the challenges and opportunities that you face here? Because you're serving as the, the union president here in yeah. Bangladesh. Yeah. So what are those, some of those challenges uh, that, and opportunities yeah, that you're facing? Yeah, thank you. Uh, last seven years, seven months, I was serving as college president. But now I am uh, serving the people as a union president. Actually, there is opportunity here to reach the people through education system. Since this is uh, uh, other religion country, dominated country, uh, reaching unreached people, education is the best way to reach the people. Mm -hmm. When they are young, our children are young, this is opportunity to educate them, to make the people of God. Right. Yeah. But uh, there is a great challenge right. because uh, uh, financially it's very poor this country. So we need to develop a lot of things through education system. Like, like I know you were sharing with me as yeah. we've been visiting here yeah. in the country yes. that your goal is to, and vision is to have each of the schools around mm. the nation to become self-supporting financially yes, yes, yeah. and to have work-study programs. Yeah. Why is that so important? Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, seven boarding schools, but financial is very uh, difficult. Uh, so we want to teach them how to go to self-supported institution. That's why we need to develop several types of uh, projects. When we 
teach them that types of uh, income generating project our students will be studying uh, with a self supported you know uh, uh, system that is my uh, conviction that's great yeah. can you g share uh, for our viewers what are some of the examples of uh, having this uh, work study or like uh, income generating project uh, practically yeah. what, what are some of the schools doing now that's yeah, working thank you uh, especially if we would make some uh, uh, pure water drinking system okay. it would be good to generate uh, income for the school also we can give that water for the community service right. another way uh, in Bangladesh there are 30,000 NGOs wow. many people travel to the local village if we would build some guest house in our school it would be also good income generating another is a, a goat project mm -hmm. that animal it's very good to grow in Bangladesh. For right. example, if we would go to uh, East Bangladesh Mission, right. whole year there is food in the hillside and mountains. When we really reach this idea, I think uh, and believe we can uh, earn a lot of uh, funds so that we can support for each school. That wow. is my conviction. That's great that, yeah. you, uh, that God has put in this vision yeah. to have uh, a water bottle uh, yeah. and filtration of yeah. uh, plants at one of the schools as well as even to have goat ministry yes. where people then can uh, raise these uh, animals yes. and then uh, either sell the milk or sell the animals and yeah. that way the school and yes, the students yeah. are able to, yeah. to earn their uh, tuition payments. Yeah. Dr. Lee, it's been great, but I know I want to ask Mrs. Lee uh, to come. Gary, Thank it's you. been Thank great you. to be here with the Lees and here in this beautiful place in Bangladesh. So reporting live from this village, I can't say the name very long, but back to you, Gary. <laughs> For many Adventists, their first view of world mission came through the mission spotlight presentations that were shown in summer schools all around the world for many, many years. Produced by the Heinrich family, these presentations just opened up new vistas for people to see what was happening in mission around the world. Well, I'm delighted to tell you that Mission Spotlight is back. And the Adventist Mission DVD that we produce and that's sent to churches all around the world is now going to be called Mission Spotlight. It will still contain the stories that you've come to love. Uh, every quarter there will be three major presentations that can be shown once a month. Or if you prefer, there'll be a new story that can be shown every week. Next up, we're going to see a story from the Mission Spotlight DVD, a center of influence that's making a difference in Korea. Centers of influence are transforming how we do ministry in certain parts of the world. A center of influence serves the needs of the communities in a number of ways. This can be an opportunity to minister to people in creative, new ways. We find centers of influence dotted across the globe. In Korea, this concept has been in place for years now. They are serving their communities in practical ways. Kwon Jeon Heng is a Seventh-day Adventist pastor who is heavily involved in coordinating centers of influence throughout the Northern Asia Pacific region around the world. There are 110 centers of influence in Korea, and uh, today we visited uh, a restaurant which is run by the Seoul Central Church. The Seoul Central Church is located in the very center of the Seoul metropolitan area. The church is located in a very busy and expensive area, but the church only opened once a week. The church decided 12 years ago to open their cafeteria to the public to provide good vegetarian food. In the business area, there are not many vegetarian restaurants. And uh, across the street, you know, there is a Cho Gas Ha. That is the headquarters of the uh, Korean Buddhism. And uh, they are all vegetarian people. And then as we started, we didn't have uh, much customers. But these days, we are entertaining 180 to uh, 200 people every day. Most of them, almost all of them are non advanced members. But uh, they really love our Adventist style health food. In the beginning, the church invested a lot of money to renovate the cafeteria. But today, the restaurant makes a good income and provides jobs for six Adventist members. 
With the income, they make donations to the local government. In that area, the church has a good reputation. The church decided to provide a scholarship for needy students. So, regardless of their religion or background, any middle school student and high school student can come to this church and get the full scholarship. And as a result, some of them are uh, majored in theology. And one of them is serving as a choir conductor of the church. And then still, they do have more income. Therefore, they uh, begin to help the uh, elderly citizens. As we visit this church every Sabbath morning, the church entertains more than 200 senior citizens. And the church provides them not only spiritual food, but the physical food also. And uh, twice a month, they are providing their round trip uh, bus fare also. As a result, the church baptizes about 60 people every year from that ministry, as they support the senior citizen ministry. This center of influence in the heart of Seoul has been a light to the community for more than 12 years. Please pray as it continues to grow and serve the community. Well, I hope you've been inspired and challenged by today's 360 degree view of mission around the world. From the teeming metropolis of Mumbai, to Mongolia, to education in Bangladesh, to centers of influence in South Korea. People are sharing the light of God's love in many different ways, many creative ways. Please continue to pray for mission around the world. Uh, pray for frontline mission workers. It can be challenging, it can be discouraging, and it's very encouraging for them to know that there's a world church praying for them. Before we go, I'd like to offer you a free gift. It's just a small thank you for your continuing support for mission. The book is called True Believer, and if you live in North America, we'd love to send you a free copy. It's an exciting story written by Gina Walleen, who writes the mission stories for Adventist Mission. It's a story of a young man who, in his early 20s, in communist Russia, discovered the love of Jesus Christ. Well, that's it for today's program. For Adventist Mission, I'm Gary Krauss, and I hope you can join me next time right here on Mission 360.